Hey guys, welcome back to Senegalese Twisted. I am back again with another review of Maîtresse de nos mariés. The last uh, episode that I reviewed was episode 18. However, today I'm going to do it a little bit different because I'm going to review episode 19 all the way to the end of season 2. And I hope everything fits in one video because a lot has happened. But let's rewind to the scene where Tairu and Dalanda are at the arcade with the kids and they see Biram and Jalika with their kids as well. Before I start, I just um, made it into four sections. So there is the time before the baby shower, the baby shower, the police investigation and the after the police investigation. Okay, so Biram and Jalika and Dalanda and Tairu went to the arcade with their children and in episode 19, Dalanda actually decides to meet Jalika at her work. And while she's there, they actually have a really great heart-to-heart and um, Dalanda asks uh, Jalika, like, do you think um, it was a human thing for Tyru to, you know, cheat on me? Like, do you think I deserved it? And um, Jalika is like, you know, um, no, I don't think you deserved it. And then she starts reflecting on her life with Biram, the fact that Biram um, was her husband and that Biram took away with her best friend. And they actually had a really great um heart to heart and at the end of that scene um they actually wish each other the best there's this scene where dalanda and ben and tairu are all seated and um ben starts talking and thanking like really thanking dalanda from the bottom of her heart for everything that um she has done and um you see that Tyro is looking at her like, what are you on about? Because I think that Ben really wanted to know, know she wanted Dalanda to know that Ben actually really appreciated it. Because when Ben was in her house, she acted as if the house was Tyro's, as if he was the one putting money into the house and making sure that there was food and everything. Do you guys remember? And I think that she just wanted to apologize to Dalanda and actually look at her and um thank her for everything you know and um, ben is like telling tairu that yes i'm going to thank her because she's the one who supported us financially she has this house you know she put the food on the table and she was um taking care of the children but also taking care of her husband you know um and then um Taihu says that you know actually Ben is right I want to thank you and um Ben actually tells Taihu that you know what um you need to just sign the divorce papers because if you want to try with someone at least try with someone who also wants to try and this woman she doesn't seem like she's willing and um Taihu is actually saying to Dalanda that you know what you'll get the custody of the kids but i will take care of them too financially and um then dalanda's like you know what we should not rush into any decisions and um at that moment like regina comes in and she's like well done you changed her mind and um i think that regina is like really the person that just wants the divorce to happen now 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 so that there's no space for Dalanda to change her mind. So back to Page. Um, Page actually um, sits Biram and Cher together and he's like asking their permission to marry their mom and they grant it to him and um, in another scene you see that um, Jalika's mom, Jalika, Biram and Page are seated and um, they are actually discussing what well, actually Biram is trying to convince Jalika to come back and he brought Page and at one point you know when Biram is taking it a bit too far, Page is like telling him that, you know what, you need to calm it down because this woman is actually her own person and she can make the decision herself. And at the end of that conversation, Jalika is like, you know what, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to talk to my pillow. 
and I'll come back with the decision but once they leave she's like I'm definitely not going to do that in another scene you see that actually Rocky is looking into Mustafa's pockets looking for something and then he comes in and is like you know you better put everything back where you found it and then eventually she um, tells him that you know what actually it's because I'm jealous and they talk about how he actually lost his job with um, or his contract with Jilia because of that scene and then in another scene you see that Rocky is actually going to Jilia's place or workplace and that's the girl from the promotion and um, they get some time alone and basically Rocky is just you know apologizing for her behavior and saying that you know what it's not uh, Mustafa's fault I'm actually really jealous and she just wants Julia to give Mustafa another chance to work together again and she actually gives it we all know that the house that Taihu and Dalanda live in is actually Dalanda's home so there's this scene where Taihu is with Sheikh and he is buying a house and um, then he buys Dalanda a car and he's telling her that you know I have a surprise for you he blindfolds her and he gives her a car and um, that's the thing because Dalanda just she just can't fake it so she's like oh maybe you should cheat more often then i get nice surprises like this taihu is like but what do you want and she's like you know what i want and that's just that he signs the divorce papers it's crazy because it seems like at the beginning of season two we all we were introduced to taihu and dalanda and they went to marriage counseling and he did not even seem interested to the point that he actually you know admitted that he doesn't love her anymore he's not attracted to her anymore but now he's doing all this effort to not let her go it's just so annoying to me there's also this scene where Dalam, uh, I mean Taihu is visiting Dalanda because whenever he gets the girls he gets the impression that they hate him while well, he automatically thinks that Dalanda is telling the girls that you know your dad is a bad man your your dad is a cheater or you know what that's the thing that Taihu thinks of Dalanda and we all know that whenever the kids are with Dalanda that the kids are also acting up so this is just their reaction to the whole divorce thing you know so Dalanda's making uh, sure that Taihu knows that whenever uh, the kids are with her they are only asking about their dad and begging her to give their dad a chance it's like like I said before Dalanda does not know how to fake it so when Taihu actually accuses her of talking bad behind his back to his children she's like well Taihu the day you left our house you stopped existing for me and that is something that Taihu cannot handle because he's like you know what I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna get my kids and I'm going to fight until the bitter end to get them do you understand what I'm saying he went to Regina whom he knows hates him to ask to talk to the lambda about this whole situation and in that scene um Regina actually makes it clear to Taihu that you know what Taihu my problem with you is that you have made it really clear that you do not love Dalanda at all and if I had known that you loved her and if I was sure that you know you cheating on her was just one mistake I would have fought Dalanda myself to take you back but that is not the case and then they just reminisce because so Cherno the guy who went on a date with Amsa um, is was supposed to marry Regina but apparently there were some people Dairu who were um, saying he should not have married her and I think that that is 
something that she might hold a grudge about for Tairu, but I'm not sure about it because Tairu says that, you know, I had nothing to do with that. He just did not want to marry you, but it's not my fault. Siaka and um, Ancha, because Ancha thinks that Siaka is her soulmate, and um, at one point, even Dalanda sees him, and um, Ancha is actually telling. Um, Dalanda that oh my god that's him that's him that's the guy and sh Dalanda just goes right up to Siaka and is like you know what I've seen you for a while and if you are available I want you to meet my friend Ancha and then she introduces Ancha to Siaka however we know that Siaka is with mommy actually so mm, something else that's playing on the background is that um, Shah is talking about his ex-wife to Salif, his business partner at Aquanic, and at the same time, Salif is talking to Shah about his crush or his girlfriend, but what they don't know is that it is the same person, and at one point, um, Salif actually wants Shah's advice to get his girlfriend back. It's like he's buying a necklace or a diamond thingy and he's asking Sheikh if that's the right one and he's really encouraging and he's like, you know what, this is the thing that will get her back. Mummy and Siaka are actually together for a little time and at one point she's actually taking a pregnancy test and she's pregnant and she doesn't want to say anything so she tells Siaka after him badgering her about you know what's wrong um, she tells him that she's pregnant and he gets like a weird reaction he's like we've only known each other for two days and um how are you pregnant all of a sudden and he screams at her and mommy's like what and she's actually saying we never use protection like that's why i got pregnant and he's like what we've never used protection so how are you pregnant now and i was like somebody did not go to school the reaction of siaka is really really toxic and he's actually telling her that you know what i'm going out i'm going to take some air and if i come back this whole talk about pregnancy it better be over it better not exist anymore and in another scene they still talk about it or they talk about it again and siaka is only asking of her to have an abortion and his reasoning is like yeah but what do we tell our parents and um he just wants her to abort forget about it and then two months later he wants to marry her and then she can have all the children she wants which is really bleh. i'm sorry that's that's just disgusting because it's i just can't talk about it it's and he just even says that we'll do it the right way. Why do, Why didn't you do it the right way the first time? And he's saying that, you know what, Lidudara, meaning that this is nothing, the abortion, because we will get stronger. Oh my god, I just could not deal with Siaka. To finish off the first section, which is like before the baby shower, it starts with this. Hamid visits philly in her shop and he is actually proposing a money laundering scheme through the um business of share so like seneginja the whole um real estate business and he is saying that you know what you guys owe me i gave you guys the videos you published it without me without my permission we did not even talk about it so yeah you guys have to do that because otherwise you girls would do so bad in prison however you guys would look so good in prison and this really scares philly and philly she tells lala who is about to pop the baby and because she said it she actually goes to the hospital straight away like lala goes into labor directly 
and I'm not kidding. And she makes Philly swear that Sheikh will never know. Like whatever happens, Sheikh cannot know that she posted those videos and um, pictures. And even after Lala gives birth and Sheikh is actually visiting her and telling her how proud he is because they got a baby boy and it's his first baby boy and it's a big thing, she seems so depressed and she's just crying and crying and crying even though Sheikh is talking about how happy she should be because she just gave birth they have a boy it's a blessing blah 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 so then you see that Merjang is waiting outside for news and Philly comes in and she's like hey Merjang you have a baby boy and um, they even talk about it. Um, Merjang even makes the joke that, you know, she's leaving baby Malik and she has now a new one, you know. And um, she's, um, Philly is actually, actually saying that she needs to prepare all the good stuff for Lala, for the baby shower, the baptism. And... Um, she actually tells Merdain about the videos that they posted it and in another scene you see that Merdain is visiting Lala she's actually encouraging Lala and telling Lala you know what you should not be scared whatever happens you know you are my daughter and if it's even necessary I would sit in prison in your place which is such a beautiful thing because it's not really common for Senegalese mother-in-laws to see their daughter-in-laws as their own and the relationship that Lala has with Merdjang is amazing and I don't really know whether it actually exists a lot but however um back to this um Merdjang is trying to reassure Lala and saying that, you know what, you will not even go to prison. You have kids, uh, you have a baby, um, I'm going to prison. And um, in another scene, um, Philly is back at the hospital with Lala and she's really not even giving attention to her son whom you hear crying in the background and she's like, he doesn't have a mom, um, I'm going to prison, there's no need for me to bond with him because he will not know me when he grows up because I will be in prison and Philly tries to talk sense into her but I don't think it worked. Marem learns that Lala has a son and this makes her think because do you guys remember that scene in season one where mommy jalika raki and marem and lala all went to the hospital and they all got their separate news and she thinks about that because she cannot have children remember marem cannot have children she is actually doubting whether or not it is right that she um filed a police report against um lala because she has now a kid and um she is thinking out loud with amsa there because she's like well the pictures are already on the internet like i mean the wrong has already been done you know and um she's actually thinking of retracting the police order um the police report and Amsa is like the devil on the shoulder and she's like oh no she needs to pay because when she posted those pictures she did not even think about your mom and your mom is sick and um Amsa is so eager for revenge <laughs> it's like crazy because then they started to look at the pictures of the baby shower because the baby shower has already started however i wanted to come back to that so the baby shower has actually already started when the scene is on and um they look through the pictures of the baby shower as well and Maha makes this comment she's like 
they're, the baby shower is actually pretty empty. I think they should do with some more guests. Guests, Because first of all, it's a firstborn son. And it's a bad omen if there are not a lot of guests. And if you um, don't accept to go to a baby shower of a boy. But all she wants to do is instigate. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry in advance. Go to senegalistwisted.com for my latest blog posts. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I see you guys in my next video.